We meet in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Welcome to this evening's service for the Tuesday of Holy Week as we make our way towards the cross and then the resurrection and glory on Sunday. Let us prepare ourselves to worship. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing our first hymn, <laughs> which is Take Up Thy Cross, the Saviour said. Please be seated for our prayers of penitence. God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let us then show our love for him by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who of thy tender love towards the world has sent thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross, grant that we may follow the example of his presence and humility and also be made partakers of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reign with, reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the prophecy of Isaiah. Listen to me, O coastlands, Pay attention, you peoples from far away. The Lord called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, he named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. And he said to me, You are my servant Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity, yet surely my cause is with the Lord and my reward with my God. And now the Lord says, who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him and that Israel might be gathered to him, for I am honored in the sight of the Lord and my God has become my strength. He says, it is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to one deeply despised, abhorred by the nations, the slave of rulers. Kings shall see and stand up, princes and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Our gradual hymn is We Sing the Praise of Him Who Died.
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honour. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out, and I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The crowd answered him, We have heard from the Lord that the Messiah remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Jesus said to them, The light is with you for a little longer. Walk while you have the light, so that the darkness may not overtake you. If you walk in the darkness, you do not know where you're going. While you have the light, believe in the light, so that you may become children of light. After Jesus had said this, he departed and hid from them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The Greek visitors said, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. But why? because they wished to see Jesus in person. They had heard so much about him, the great healer from Nazareth. Did he really exist? They needed to see Jesus physically to know all the stories about him were true. Therefore, it begs me to ask all of you tonight, if there was a knock on the church door right now, and a stranger asked to see Jesus, what would you say? Just bear that in mind, and I'll come back to it. John's Gospel has given to us a great gift, a window into what would happen and why to Jesus at the end of his public ministry, at the end of his mission given to him by God, and this message explained the purpose of the cross and what it meant to him. Suffering, death, and humiliation on a cross. Jesus wants us to respond today to all that he had done by believing in God the Father, but through him, Jesus Christ. We have been offered the opportunity to see Jesus spiritually after his death. We might have missed seeing Jesus in his divine flesh, but it is our faith that opens the door so that we can see him spiritually. If, and it's a big if, if we see Jesus spiritually, we begin to understand his glorification by being incarnated, and he himself, God would glorify on the cross. In these five words, Sir, we wish to see Jesus, 
meaning is found. Because if we can see what his death was for, who Jesus is through what he did, we will understand its greater spiritual depth, his victory over death on the cross. If we see Jesus, we are fortunate because we will begin to understand his humility as he attempted to explain to an awkward, impatient crowd the reasons why he came to earth. He came to glorify God the Father, and God the Father would glorify him. Jesus knew now death was near, and it was the only way humanity could be saved. He told the crowd this, but alas, much of the message was lost upon them. They were only interested in what Jesus could do for them. What sign could he do for them? What miracle? What disease could he cure? But for a true disciple, the gospel goes and encourages us to journey through these painful steps with Jesus as we are doing this Holy Week for us to understand what really happened. This is the real meaning of Holy Week. Jesus would die on a cross at his crucifixion and would then be resurrected. By dying, Jesus would yield much fruit with many more disciples turning towards God and he thereby gaining more children for God. It is only by dying that Jesus could achieve these things. The seed is Jesus. The fruit is all of us and others in the future still yet to come to be called by God and those yet to be born. The nature of our life gained, of course, as we know, is eternal with Jesus as our servant, the great high priest. For Jesus' death was his priority at the time. He knew his death would be in agony, but it would reveal the glory of his father. His death brought victory over death. This is the great divine paradox within the kingdom of God. The glorification of Jesus was upon the cross. His mission was ongoing even after his ascension. We all prove that, and his witness was to the Father. We are therefore left with a cycle of perpetual motion, explained perhaps by the word picture of Christ crucified, more believers, more gospel spread. Christ crucified, more believers, gospel spread, and so on and so forth, throughout the generations, from one generation to another, from one person to another, from one Christian to another. Sir, I wish to see Jesus. Jesus was open to these inquisitive Greeks, whether they were Jewish proselytes or Gentiles who worshipped the God of Israel, it doesn't matter. Jesus had become very popular. The Pharisees, who by now were agitated and paranoid, and they considered Jesus to be followed by the whole world in any case. So he must be killed, but he was still not arrested yet. God was in control of the timing of his death, and God and Jesus seemed to communicate by a hidden spiritual conversation, triggered by those famous sayings we've heard tonight. My time has not yet come. Not yet come. My hour has come. Keying Jesus into what was going to happen. He wasn't going to be arrested, he wasn't going to be crucified then, but he would be when his hour had come. The Greek's visit had prompted Jesus to acknowledge that two highly significant changes were about to occur. The time has come to enable the spread of the gospel to go the way of the kernel, like wheat, to describe how much more useful Jesus would be, alas, when dead. This is his fruit, this is God's fruit. In Jerusalem, the authorities wanted to arrest Jesus in the temple, if you remember, when he cleared out all those not respecting his father's house, but he still wasn't arrested. His hour had not yet come, but he knew that. And Jesus said, as we know now, the visit of the Greeks 
prompted him to proclaim that when he is lifted up, he will draw all people to himself. And that included us, the Gentiles, not just the Jewish nation. Jesus predicted his own death. God shared his glory with his son. Jesus unsurprisingly was troubled, which led him to ask, Father, save me from this hour? But no, he knew that. No, he couldn't, because that's why he was there in the first place. He had come to this hour. God was with Jesus all the time. Jesus asked God to glorify his name, and that voice from heaven, I have glorified it and I will glorify it again, wasn't for the benefit of Jesus or the disciples or any interested onlookers or bystanders or whatever. No, it was for the sake of all those disbelieving in the crowd that didn't understand what was really happening. Once again, the Father will glorify the Son on the cross and with the resurrection and eventually with his second coming. The crowd, of course, didn't like this. They became aggressive and challenged Jesus to explain why would, for heaven's sakes, excuse the expression, the Saviour not remain on earth? He was going to be the Messiah. Why could he say the Son of Man would be lifted up? Are they going back to Moses' time where the snake was lifted up? Some said to Jesus disrespectfully, who is this Son of Man? Yet the people and authorities had no idea what was happening and missed the whole salient message. The cross is not the defeat of Jesus. It is the victory of God. His victory is not a superficial moral victory of a martyr, but the physical and spiritual victory over all opposing forces and powers. Humanity will be judged and saved even death itself has been defeated. We need Jesus today because he reigns in the glory of God versus the glory of fallen humanity. His glorification is this manifestation of power and glory with God as the ruler of all. Jesus was glorified by a wooden cross, rusty nails and a crown of thorns on a blood-soaked hillside. He entered and left the world as humbly as he possibly could. He is our true saviour. Amen. Let us pray. We stand with Christ in his suffering. For forgiveness of the many times we have denied Jesus, we pray to the Lord for grace to seek out those habits of sin which means spiritual death, and by prayer and self-discipline to overcome them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Christian people, that through the suffering of disunity, they may grow a, a rich union in Christ. For those who make laws, interpret them and administer them, that our common life may be ordered in justice and mercy in equity and equality. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
for those who still make Jerusalem a battleground. For the people of Gaza and the West Bank, for those who are suffering, those who are fighting, those who are defending, those who have lost, those who are. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who have the courage and honesty to work openly for justice and peace. For those who care deeply about unity and equality. For those who redress the rights and wrongs of the past. For those who make good on the promises of our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those in the darkness and agony of isolation, that they may find support and encouragement. For those living with the effects of dementia, for those watching their loved ones slip away and become a new person, for those people who lose something every day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are weighed down with hardship, failure or sorrow, and feel that God is far from them, draw near to those people, Lord, and comfort them. Allow them to know your comforting presence. Allow them to feel your strength, giving them strength. Allow them to know your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are tempted to give up the way of the cross, we pray for those who have died in faith we, find that we, we pray that we all may find mercy in the day of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you please stand for the peace? Once we were all far off, but now in union with Christ Jesus, we have been brought near through the shedding of Christ's blood, for he is our peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. peace.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God through Jesus Christ our Lord. For as the time of his passion and resurrection draws near, the whole world is called to acknowledge his hidden majesty. The power of the life-giving cross reveals the judgment that has come upon the world and the triumph of Christ crucified. He is the victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever, our advocate in heaven to plead our cause exalting us there to join with angels and archangels, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so far, the calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. John the Baptist, St. Alban and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever, forever praising you and saying, <laughs> I beg your pardon, <laughs> may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you humbled yourself by taking the form of a servant and were obedient even unto the death of the cross for our salvation. Grant us the mind to follow you and to proclaim you as Lord and King to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And we say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Thank you all so much for being here this evening. It's been a real joy and privilege to serve you tonight. So we stand for our final hymn, Sweet Sacrament Divine. Christ crucified, draw you to himself, to find in him a sure ground for faith, a firm support for hope, and the assurance of sins forgiven, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you this day and always. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.